Hi, Jasmine Faulkner. Thank you so much for coming and joining me on the Mary Jess Meets podcast. Now, before we dive straight into how interesting and wonderful you are, I'm just going to ask our lovely listeners to subscribe to this channel, please, and press the like button because that will really help us out. So now that I've got that quick little ask out of the way, Jasmine, thanks so much for coming on. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I've really been looking forward to having a little chat with you today. I've been so looking forward to it as well because we were just saying we feel like we kind of know each other already even though we haven't spoken <laughs> I know. because of the other girls like I've had Wendy and Georgie on the podcast both amazing amazing women um and yeah. now it's so great to have you on and to get to know you so yeah thank you so much for giving us your time today no thank you and it's been really cool uh, learning about you through social media and obviously your mailing list and watching you yesterday on songs of praise so good so congratulations thank you so much (laughs) that was very exciting (laughs) it's just it's so nice to be able to have be able to talk about something positive during times like this because it's 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 not been easy for artists let's face it it's not been easy so to have something like this to shout about and i just i feel so blessed for that um to have songs of praise going on but but also the other thing i've said about um lockdown and, and, the, and the COVID pandemic is that without that I wouldn't have started this podcast mm-hmm. um, and for me to be able to actually have really good in-depth conversations with other musicians has been such a blessing because yeah. like this this opportunity wouldn't have been created otherwise um, so like I don't think you and I would be chatting like this and that just seems yeah. like such a shame when you know, you're obviously a wonderful person because you go traveling around the world with three other women singing to thousands of people um, and you all still get on like a house on fire. So, you know, that says that you guys must all be so lovely. So I'm so grateful that I get to chat you, chat to you on the podcast and actually have good long conversations because you can do that on a podcast. Exactly. I guess there are so many silver linings that have come out of this time. Um, so, yeah, I think we just have to look for them and then run with it. Yeah, because there's not many of them. So you got to, <laughs> even if it's True. just this big, we'll yeah. take that, thank you, and just run with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you said that you've been practising somewhere different during lockdown. So yeah. you, you've had to change things quite a lot, because I know that Ema, she's living in a flat in Dublin, and so she had to find another place to rehearse um, because of neighbours. That's exactly my thing. So my studio down the road has been shut through throughout lockdown, of course, and is still shut. And they're not really sure when they're going to reopen. So I can't sing at home because my neighbours, they might be able to hear me now. They hate my singing and they've, they've complained. So I just can't sing at home. And even when people are like, but you know, it's your right, blah, blah, blah. You can make noise. I just, I don't feel comfortable and I, you know, I'm tight and there's no point. But during lockdown, I was like, well, I can't not practice and create and do things because this is my job. So I looked around the house for somewhere to make a studio. First of all, we looked in the cupboard and then I was like, well, that is against their wall. So I can't really do it into the cupboard. And then I looked at my bed and it opens up, you can lift it, and then it kind of has a dip in it, like a box for storage. I don't know if you know the storage beds. So what I've done is attach towels to the side of it. So when you lift it up, there were towels there, and then I pull the duvet over the back, and then I climb in and I sit inside my bed, and that's where I've been doing my recordings and my singing practice for months. No way! Yeah. That is so innovative! <laughs> It had to be done. <laughs> Your neighbours, though, I mean, I know hundreds of people who would be so happy to swap places with them, myself included. If I got to listen to your beautiful voice with you practising, move me now. Like, I just can't, can't imagine how grumpy some people can be. I know. They said they want to move and it's ruining their life. <gasps> <laughs> so it reduced me to practising under my bed. But you know, it worked. Tears, let alone to practice in under my bed. Like, what a horrible thing to say. Like, surely it's nice if you can get on with your neighbours, surely. Like, even if they just said, 
you know, just let us know the times when you'll be practicing. They could pop out for a couple hours. I mean, I during that time, you could go out for exercise. Yeah. I said, I'll practice when your kids are, you're taking your kids to school or blah, blah, blah. And she said, no. And that's when I thought, okay, I, just, I can't win here. No, you can't win with people like that. That's so <laughs> sad though. I'm so sorry to hear that. I mean, I was just, I was just, well, I've spoken to a few people on this podcast now about how yeah. you could do the best performance you've ever done in your life and people are still not going to like it. Like we have to accept that as artists, but to live with people like that next door to you, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Like, not, yeah. if it's on the internet, people can just like, there's plenty of other stuff on the internet, just move on, watch something else or don't come to a show. Um, you know, they, you just tell them to quietly move on with their lives but if they're living next door to you um, and you have to deal with people like that I don't know how you escape that I'm so sorry to yeah. hear that that's just something crazy to have to deal with that I can't it is a shame but I just I mean whenever I see her I just smile at her and I just think that you know it is what it is and she must be you know not the happiest she was so mean but at least I can practice for hours on end now under my bed. But actually, so it got to a point a couple of weeks ago, you know, when things started easing up and I thought, right, I can't sit under here anymore. So I started calling churches and venues around and I had no, sorry, it's too much. We can't, we can't deal with that right now. Um, so, you know, to see if I could use a space to practice. And then I just found this, um, film studio so I just I was just googling and it's a 10-15 minute cycle and I, I said my whole spiel on the phone you know at this point I had nothing to lose I was like I'm under my bed and I can't do it anymore and where I usually go and um, practice singing it's only three pounds an hour and everywhere else is like 100 or 150 and he said you know just come whenever you can and we'll, we'll work it out so within the hour I was in the most beautiful theatre with a piano on the stage practising. No. So I go, I literally message or call and say, is it, is it free? And they say, yep. Yeah. And I can head over and practise for as long as I want. And it's all for free. And yeah, big shout out to Sands Film Studio. So really interesting. They've also... Um, it's a really interesting place. They've got over 10,000 costumes, which they hire out to um, tons of films and plays. So Harry Potter, um, Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Um, oh my God, there's a huge list. Harry Potter stuck in my mind because I love it. But <laughs> what a gem that's so close. And the people are just angels. That's incredible. Right, I'll tell you what, they've been so lovely to you. I'm going to write this yeah. down. We're going to put a link to them in the description so people can check them out. Yes. And they've been massively supporting the arts during this time and they've been live streaming from that theatre um, some incredible artists, singers, yeah. instrumentalists, and they also have a cinema club. So if anyone fancies, and you know, the, the concerts are all free and you know, it's the donate what you can if you can sort of um, so check it out for sure right what was the name because i'm writing this down sans sans films sans film studios studios yeah they sound like a godsend oh they are they're incredible wow yeah. they go out of their way honestly okay they are my new favorite people right now but tell me about it amazing oh my gosh to go from under your bed <laughs> to a full on theater with a piano and everything that's amazing and it must be, it must be so well. nice as well to just imagine when the theater's full again when when it's possible again to then be singing to exactly. the oh, that sounds amazing <laughs> yeah yeah what kind of stuff have you been practicing there in your own time um so been practicing some Ida things because we actually had our first live show back yesterday. <gasps> big, big news, big, big, big thing. Yeah, it really was. It was, so we had it at Tunbridge Castle and um, there were bubbles laid out for people. So marking on the ground, you could either fit six people in or two.
few people in so you'd go with you know your your little bubble and um it was beautiful beautiful castle behind us we did our show we had audience clapping and cheering <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> i know that must have been amazing i just it Oh, my last live concert was February. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? And it's so weird. Like you think everything's just going to be the same when you get back on and do it. And in so many ways it is. But also it's ever so slightly removed. You know, you need to build it back into your body. Do you know what I mean? And um, today I woke up and it feels like I've been hit by a bus. <laughs> All the, the adrenaline and um emotion and energy used it's just taken it completely out of me it feels like i had about three bottles of wine last night and i didn't have a single drop <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i know what you're saying though i always get that with adrenaline when i'm doing a concert that really takes it out of me and i was um talking to marcella bovio on the podcast about touring um, and how night after night when you get that adrenaline rush and then you've got to try and calm down to go to sleep and then you get that adrenaline yeah. rush in the next day trend. Like you're on a roller coaster and it, it is tiring on your body, like really tiring. Um, yeah. so you feel that again after such a long time. Your body's like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, it was a big shock to the system, but it was, it was magical to be back with the girls. Um, and Wendy's still in Scotland, which is so, so sad, but we had lovely Kirsty Depping. Um, so yeah, it was lovely. Well, that's so brilliant. I'm so happy to hear that. And it's just, I can't wait to get out there performing again. Um, but I said to somebody the other day, I mean, it feels really weird to say this, like, but I am so glad that I canceled my Christmas concerts. <laughs> yeah like, it does it makes me feel sad and relieved at the same time to say that because who knows if the theatres are still actually going to be there that I'd booked yeah um, and then because you have to have people in bubbles you're spending so much money organizing these concerts it's not just hiring the theater it's all the other stuff like all the promo and the like the physical press with pictures and posters and all that kind of thing um there's loads of stuff that goes into it and when you have to have a socially distanced audience, there's no way you can make that money back. You'd be lucky to break even. I know. So we were talking so with Bravo Productions from last night who put on the show. Um, you know, as you said, without all of COVID, it's already a lot to put on something. And with this, you know, they said they had meeting after meeting after meeting and then all the rules are changing. So they had to keep updating all their things and hiring new people to come in and make sure it's all you know perfectly safe which of course is understandable but whew, it's a lot isn't it it's a ridiculous amount yeah <laughs> um every single year i do the christmas tour i get excited about it and then after i've done all of the gigs <laughs> and it gets to christmas in january i'm like i've got to start organizing the tour but no why am i doing this <laughs> myself it's too stressful i can't do it again and then every year i'm like woo christmas tour <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it is that is so the way it is isn't it? yeah I, oh my gosh. I mean i've shared my tour stories on here before about how how when like when things go wrong things go wrong they go seriously wrong um, so I've shared my stories of those things before. I had a good chat with Jennifer Thomas on here about when things go wrong, um, yeah. about like tour stories. And it was just, it's so stressful to hear what happens sometimes behind the scene. And you just, you're hoping that the audience don't have a clue. And I'm Never glad to say that a lot of the comments I got afterwards were like, oh, I came to that show and I had no idea that blah, 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 happened beforehand. And I'm like, well, good. <laughs> yeah, you're not meant to know. Good. <laughs> Oh, do you have any stories like that from all your touring and traveling and gigging and all that kind of thing? Um, do you know what? I don't. I've just had funny on stage things like the music stopping twice in a song. So we had a backing track <laughs> and we were singing and then it died out. So we sort of faded out. And then we were like, okay, you know, oh, there must be a technical error. Let's go again. And we go again. And the same thing happens. And you're thinking, oh, poor audience. But, you know, they were so supportive. By the end, they were up on their feet. 
and you know even more supportive than they would have been because you know they just got right behind us and they knew it wasn't it wasn't our fault um and then a really really funny time when i first joined ida um there's a part in our show when i go off and grab a champagne bottle and come back on stage so wendy won't mind me saying this is one of my favorite stories um i had my mic in the wrong hand so it would have been this hand and the champagne bottle here and at the end we the girls lift their champagne glasses and i lift the bottle up so wendy clocked i had my things in the wrong hand so she swapped her glass and mic around to match me so at the end we lifted it up but because she was so used to doing it the other way at the end we all say cheers she said cheers into her glass and lifted up her mic <laughs> so clever yeah <laughs> i love how you guys have your dance moves that you match to each other like that on the stage it's just it must make the whole performance so much more like glued together if that makes sense yeah it's so fun i love it it's really fun learning it's just it's nice and it's subtle um yeah. there are little dance moves and arms and things yeah it's fun it's yeah good. no that sounds lovely and then when you've got depths in i guess they've got to learn all of the moves and everything do you have like a video that you can send to them so that they can learn all of these things Yep, there are videos and then we also meet up and so for, for this one we, we met up with Kirsty and I mean she's so quick at learning everything, um, she's brilliant. So I mean she, she's done cruises since way back so she knows it all already um, but yeah, we, yeah, it's exciting going through it again with somebody. That's when I first joined the group I was like gosh you must have to teach this to you know over and over and over because of course you've got the depths and then I was new and they said no it's exciting and then we can tweak things and change things um so yeah they were nice and patient with me <laughs> yeah they do strike me as being like that those girls they're so lovely um but can we actually start a bit more from the beginning as we talk about your singing I'd love to know more about how you joined Ida but let's let's go a bit further back first of all and talk about how you got into singing because I know that you auditioned for Junior Guild Hall but you had little to no opera knowledge at all at that point so can you tell us more about that? Yeah so I started singing lessons when I was about seven and then music became my thing you know so I was singing I was playing the flute and the piano and then at secondary school a teacher said to me go and audition for Junior Guild Hall and be a small fish in a big sea and um, I had my pieces I kind of not specifically been classically trained but it was um, my singing teacher was a, a classical singer so it was just a, a general healthy kind of technique that I'd been taught so I thought okay well I'll audition and I had some classical pieces and I knew bits and bobs about that world the opera world but not really and I, I auditioned and, you know, I said to my mum, I'm not going to get in, am I? She was like, mm, nah. <laughs> and then I got the call and I answered the phone at home and he said, you've got a place? And I was like, pardon? What do you mean I've got a place? Surely not. Uh, so that's kind of where my, my love for classical music and opera began. I didn't really have an interest in it before, particularly, because um, I know a lot of people they live and breathe it. Um, so after two years of that, I was 18 and a singing teacher got behind me and really helped me for my audition for normal guild hall. And that's when, well, I, I got in and I was quite young still. I was 18 and my teacher said, you know, you are a bit too young, but you've already entered without my knowledge. So if you're going to audition, you're going to do it well. And I got in, so I said, well, I'm going, sorry. And she, she was still my teacher all the way through Guildhall and she was absolutely brilliant, supported me and, you know, looked after me very, very well. And then, um, yeah, I saw the Ida advert after having a bit of a break from singing. And it all, it all happened from there. Okay, so who's your singing teacher? Let's give them a shout out. So she's called Marilyn Reese. Well, Marilyn Reese, thank you so much for crafting such a wonderful voice. Thank yeah. you very much for that, first of all. But then 
You said you took a, a break oh. from singing. What were you doing during that break and why did you decide to take that? So I kind of panicked when I left Guildhall because I didn't really know what I was going to do. You know, you, you're building up for your final recitals and you kind of forget there's a life after uni. Yeah. So um, I love children and working with children and I'd always wanted to do it. So I found this job at Gymbury Play and Music and um, it is a program for zero to five year olds and you work on them through music and play to develop their you know to develop their skills as a little tiny human being and um it was absolutely brilliant so i had once a two week old baby in one of my classes oh it's so sweet and you must be thinking like well what can you do with a tiny tiny baby but you do all things like um baby sign language you sing to them do massages and it's, the parents are all in there with them it's so sweet and i had such a lovely team of of girls yeah. working so it was a wonderful uh, experience. Then I thought, I'm not singing enough. So I left them and ventured into auditioning. Oh, great. So what were you auditioning for at that point? So to be honest, I had only, well, I auditioned for the ENO for the role of Flora in The Turn of the Screw. Mm. And I'd always been told, your voice is too young. You need to wait for it to mature. You are too young blah 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 so I auditioned for this and I had the best response I could have asked for they said hello sorry your voice is too mature but come and audition in a year and a half for work on our main stage I was like okay <laughs> they said your voice was too mature because Flora is she's quite a, she's a, a little girl so they wanted someone a bit younger than me actually and younger sounding um and I haven't gone back for that that audition yet but maybe in the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must be so weird after being told you're too young all the time to then be told you're too mature. You're like, oh, I can't win. I know, seriously. <laughs> um, but then I think, what was, oh, I auditioned for a couple of other things, but nothing really ever happened. And then I went and met the girls of Ida and I wasn't sure about it because they traveled a lot. And they did a lot of work. I was like, I don't know if I have time. And then I met them. I was like, oh God, I can make time for this. They are amazing people. I love them already. And then I had a second audition. I was like, please, 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 please. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that even come about though? Was, where was the advert? Like, where did you see this audition? Where were um, you audition here? Oracle. So uh -huh. I was scrolling through and I said to my boyfriend, oh, this looks really cool. Shall I do it? Mm, maybe not because, you know, they're away a lot. And he said, just send an email. That's all you can do. And I had some recordings that were raw and they just had a tiny, tiny bit of reverb. They weren't very good um, in terms of qual quality. So I sent them and, and I had a lovely re reply from Georgie. And then, yeah, I went in and met them and, and I had to learn three pieces to sing with them. Mm. Um, I was so nervous. <laughs> yeah. It's great. For any, for any audition, when you're, especially when you want it like that, it's going to be, it's going to be nerve wracking. Um, and there are so many things that are out of your control with an audition like that as well, because if your voice blends and matches, then great. But if it doesn't, there's nothing you can do about that because it's all an organic thing. And you know, you've not, how it sounds. Exactly. So yeah, but I, your voices blend so beautifully. Yeah, they really you. do and I loved I, oh gosh everything that you've put out recently during lockdown has just been amazing being able to oh, do that. Um, the medley that you did as well well all right I'm good I'm, I was just about to go spouting out telling everybody about it but it's your story you tell us <laughs> <laughs> well so we released um stars Elena's medley in aid of health musicians and released it with official London theatre um and Wendy arranged it and it's absolutely epic. It's, it's so much fun to sing. Yeah. And um, I think we've got about 50,000 hits um, on YouTube now. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had such a fun time doing it and the girls are great. They, they sound brilliant. And it was, it was really nice to do something like that during lockdown, you know, something a bit, bigger you know it wasn't for us well 
help musicians we are musicians <laughs> it did it did come back and help they did help me with some funding um but Yay! you know i know they're so they're so good so we thought well we can only give back something and help you know give them some money to okay. help and then they gave you some funding for something in return yeah. well not in return but i applied for the um 500 pounds one off grant so the beginning of lockdown so yeah. that paid for a month of my rent um and then also they did a second scheme it's for people who didn't meet the criteria to get um self-employed help mm. and i'm one of the lucky people who fell through those cracks so um i oh. get a small amount every month from them oh my gosh that's amazing yeah it's it, it helps it's it's really really lucky that there are there is something like that and it's not particularly hard to sign up to, you know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm going to write this down because I'm going to need to put that link in the description below as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to make a note of that. Musicians. Yeah. 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 To make sure we put that in. Um, cause I know there's quite a few people who did fall through the cracks of the funding help that was available from the government. And I'm so sorry to hear that you were the ones who, one of the ones who fell through the cracks. That must've been devastating. It's just, annoying <laughs> because I don't, I don't feel annoying is a strong enough term for this. <laughs> it's like my boyfriend and I we're both self-employed and he got it and I didn't and there is literally no difference I mean I just had employed work two years ago which was a little bit more than 50 percent of my income that's why but I don't have any of that employed work now so oh goody that's what it is I've, I can't complain. I survived. I can still live in London. I know a lot of people have it worse off. So I'm very lucky with what I do have. But. Wow. I love how you're staying positive. With <laughs> you've got to. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, you've got to try somehow. But I, yeah, that must have been really difficult at the time. Um, but great that you have such a supportive boyfriend that, you know, you're able to help each other as a team. Um, yeah. And that's really wonderful. But you said he's in music as well yeah exactly he's a trumpeter and um he's just at alton towers now doing their Oktoberfest with his german umpar band because what else are you going to do at this time of the year <laughs> so cool and living at alton towers oh my gosh but i know. How does that work with like the new rules and social distancing and yeah so it's all outdoors and they've got loads of um benches you know wooden bench tables what are they called? Like outdoor garden. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They've got loads of them around. So I guess it would just be six people at a table. But in terms of going on the rides and things, I don't know how that's working. Today is his first day ever going on a roller coaster. So I'm going to, I'll find out. How old is this person? 25. And he hasn't been on a roller coaster yet? No. Where is it? What? <laughs> I know. And I'm annoyed I'm not doing it with him. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'll find out later how it's all working in terms of the theme park. Okay, interesting to find out what you think of roller coasters as well. Wouldn't I mean... <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well that's quite interesting, um, and great that you know he's still got work, um, and that he was yeah. able to support as well. That's really good news because, oh, it's been tough. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy to hear that. But. Even with everything like that going on, you're still raising money for charity. Like you're such a giving, loving, wonderful person. Um, and you said that you're, both your mum and yourself have raised money for this charity. Tell us more about that. So Kenyan Kids is the name of the charity and they predominantly help um, girls who have parents who are living life in the wrong way. So they're either drug addicts um, and you know, they don't have a good life so it takes these girls who have become orphans um in and looks after them and throughout concerts before lockdown and events that my mum and I've put on together we've raised about six thousand pounds um which has been topped up by the rotary club that she is part of to eight thousand pounds and my mum's so sweet throughout lockdown she's a Pilates instructor all of her well majority or all I can't remember which but a lot of her clients are just paying the money straight into the account for this for the girls education instead of my mum taking it wow. she's so wonderful 
so yeah we've, we've helped with their education and um, my mum actually went out there a few years ago and she said these girls are just the most amazing positive characters and they have nothing I'm gonna cry <laughs> we have so much and and you know we also have so much to complain about and then these girls with so little feel like they now have the world you know oh because they have an education because they have an education because they have um this home that's been made for them because they feel safe um if the girls don't have an education it's more likely they're going to go down the road to prostitution and an unhealthy way of living and it's so easy for that to happen so just by being steered in the right direction they they are given a different world wow that's absolutely amazing oh my gosh right we're putting the link to that in the description as well <laughs> i'm writing this down which is important <laughs> amazing okay, we'll put it in the description and then if people are joining us live for the premiere of this podcast we'll stick it in the chat box as well um, Amazing. So that people can check out this charity because oh gosh it sounds like they do incredible things and so amazing to give that opportunity to people who have just like you can't choose where you're born you can't choose who your parents are the fact that that you're then able to raise money for them and give them those opportunities is amazing mm -hmm. have you been out there yourself or is it just your mum that's gone out no it's just my mum and one thing that really like struck home was when she went to um a room which had all the babies in it and she oh. said she didn't know which baby to hold because they were all you know crying or making a sound and you know you'd hold one and soothe it and then you'd be like well i need i need the next one now and it's just so it's heartbreaking and it's unbelievable that that's something you know that that's a thing that's so sad. I mean, it's so incredibly sad, but at the same time, if those girls are now in that place, having opportunities given to them and, and being in that safe environment, that's, that's yeah. amazing that they can find themselves there and that that is available for them. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's sad, but good at the same time. Does yeah. that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I'll put the link in the description so um, people can find out more about this amazing charity and help those poor orphans. That's just an amazing thing that you're doing. Um, Kenyan Kids, it was called, wasn't it? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Um, well, moving on from Kenyan Kids, we'll make sure <laughs> that we put the link there um, so that people can check that out. But um, I want to talk more about your music and your um, different things and ventures uh, that you set up. And I know you set up a Patreon during lockdown um which is a very clever and savvy thing to do i know a lot of musicians have, have done that um but i saw a post from a wonderful friend and fan our lovely john harvey he was saying that your patreon was one of the best that he had seen which is so sweet and like john supports a lot of people so i'm, I'm now thinking my gosh what's your <laughs> patreon i want to know more about it oh, well <laughs> um, yeah so i actually started following Dorno Porter, who is an author. Do you know the actor Chris O'Dowd? No. He's in Bridesmaids. He's the policeman. He's an Irish, yeah, an Irish actor. Okay. Um, so it's her, his wife, and I've read all her books, and I love her, and I follow her on Instagram, and I kept seeing posts about her Patreon. I thought, well, I've got to read what she's writing. I need to find out more. And then when lockdown happened, I thought, you know, I can't perform live, so I'll make something that I can, you know, do at home, perform from my, my home. And I set it up and bought all the gear and had literally no idea how to record, how to make it sound nice. Yeah. And all of that, um, I know you've been through the recording process as well. If the learning curve is like this, it's the whoosh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So um, after setting up under the bed and whatnot, um, <laughs> I, I started launching, I launched it and then I put on my first videos and had some family following and then friends and then slowly, slowly it's built. Um, and I'm so grateful to all the people who support me because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's one person following me or a thousand, 
but just the fact that people are doing it makes me want to give more and more and more and think of better ideas and be more creative so at each level I have a different um goal well I have a different goal um every time I hit a 10 number so at 10 subscribers I had to sing standing or in a headstand <laughs> That's an interesting so, one. and I'm too away from when I reach 20 subscribers, um, I'm going to learn the ukulele in a week and then perform what I've learned. <laughs> and then at 30 subscribers, I need to use every instrument in the house um, in my video that week. And I think we've counted about 14 video, uh, 14 instruments, including all of James's trumpets, um, like kazoo's guitar, his ukulele. Can drum. you play any of these? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm going to have to learn really quickly. Um, so it's, I like making these little challenges and I think it's fun for the audience as well to see me being a bit silly. And I wouldn't call that a little challenge. You'll have to learn 14 <laughs> instruments in a week. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just been really good. So my goal patrons can request songs and, um, I like having that interaction with them as well. And it's also nice building a little community. You get to know your subscribers more. And um, yeah, it's so much fun. That's amazing. I'm, yeah, I know exactly what you mean about building a community. I feel like I've got that in a few places online and it makes me so happy. Like my fan group on Facebook, I know I can post anything in there um, mm -hmm. and they'll just, they'll help me with whatever I need. Like I'm not very, tech savvy um i do struggle with technology even though i really try to be its friend it's not interested a bit like your neighbors um <laughs> yeah so um yeah I, when i need technical help i know i can go in there and, and some of the tech savvy people will help me which is great and then this podcast i really feel like i've created such an amazing community with this and it brings in new people each time because of course i've got different people on it um, but then we chat in the chat box as it premieres and then in the comments afterwards and it's really lovely because I think people feel like they're able to get to know me a bit more because yeah. without the podcast normally the only time that your fans get to hear you talk is if, like maybe you might do the odd Facebook live or something but like before that it was radio and then but on the radio you've got like two minutes to say everything yeah and then you don't really get to know the person you just get to know what they're selling which is yeah, not exactly. you're on the radio. So. <laughs> I feel like I know you because I've watched your podcasts. <laughs> so it, it's true, it's true. And that is something that's so wonderful because when you're living in an age of technology, which we are now with coronavirus, especially, yeah. it's great to be able to have those in-depth conversations that you wouldn't normally get to have. So having the podcast here, I really feel like I've been able to get to know people so much better, not only the people that I have on the podcast and my lovely guests, like your wonderful self, but also being able to talk to people in the chat box as it goes live um, and finding out who the fans want me to talk to next as well. You know, you end up having conversations about that. And it's so lovely to create that. So to have that designated space with Patreon, where just the people who are your Patreons can see this stuff, like it really does build a community within that website, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, it, yeah. I was just going to say something, but I can't say it yet because I haven't released it on there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. My dad has come up with a really good idea. Yeah of um, something that I can do uh, as a little series and it's just it's pointless because I can't say what it is but it's little ideas like that that um, you know I would never have thought about if as you said you know with the podcast you wouldn't have done it if you weren't in a situation um, I wouldn't have started Patreon I wouldn't have had these ideas I wouldn't have learned how to record and to be able to grow and build within these things it's amazing and now we've met virtually next we can meet in real life we yeah. can sing together you know all of these things can come from this now which is yeah. it's it's great absolutely this is what we spoke about earlier we took have taken about those oh get my words out talking about those silver linings even if they're really little um yeah and running with them as much as you can yeah so important to do that and i'm i'm so lucky that 
you know, I have had a few things come in where I've gone, right, if it weren't for coronavirus, this wouldn't have happened. So let's try and think positively about this whole situation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, which can be quite difficult. But um, with your Patreon, I know you've got things planned for that because you just said that you have another idea, which is quite exciting. <laughs> but um, now that you are able to record from home and you do have your Patreon, what, have you, what do you think you've got coming up for you? Um... In terms of I just say I love that when I talk to singers, they like sing a bit of the sentence. I do it too. It's great. I think it's just part of it. My boyfriend's always like, "Do you have to sing that sentence?" I'm like, "Yes, of course you do. It's important." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you mean in terms of Patreon? What's up next, or just in general? Uh, well, you can tell us a bit more about Patreon if you can, but I know you said that you can't quite say stuff yet. So uh, we can talk about it in general if that's easier. Yeah. Talk about that now. Well, at the moment, I mean, I don't know how much I can say about this as well, but I'm doing a recording um, for a, for a film, and um, it's I'm still record. I can't record in the new place because of the acoustics. It's actually really dead under my bed, which is a really good acoustic to record in. Yes. So I'm still doing that there. But um, I'm currently in the process of recording a track for this film. Mm. But it, it's quite stressful because this, it's not for me. With Patreon, um, it, I put out what I'm happy with and I'm not putting pressure on myself for it to be absolutely perfect because I want it to stay a place that is a happy place for me and a creative and energized place. And I feel if I get too pernickety, I'll get hung up on things and I'll never be happy with it. Um, so I just like that to be a free flowing place, but this isn't for me, it's for someone else and it has to be how they want it, of course. So it's just a different way of working and um, I'm enjoying it a lot, but it's, you know, it's different. Wow, it does sound different. Uh, but being able to record from home must have opened up that opportunity for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was quite lucky that you know I could say, well, I can I can do it from here. I don't have to travel anywhere, and um, it's it's been really fun and learning about the the film and everything. Well, that's so, brilliant. Yeah. I can't wait for you to be able to say more about that. I want to hear more. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that would be really good. You'll have to keep us updated as to the progress of that. But um, have you got any more recordings in the pipeline with Ida or as a solo artist yourself, anything like that? Yeah, so we were just messaging frantically today about a possible something with Ida. I'm so secretive today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, honestly, I've been so secretive recently because I've had to that's the way it is though isn't it is you can't talk about anything until it's actually confirmed and until it's done because you don't know what's going to come along that might derail it exactly so you you can't you're not able to say anything because it's not actually happened yet and that's the thing you want to be able to shout about it from the rooftops going hey i've just done this great idea i'm going to be working with xyz we're going to be doing blah 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 but then like originally before coronavirus hit i had a project like that in the pipeline i was going to fly to another country to record a music video um, so if I'd have told people about that and then COVID yeah. hit, you know, it, it wouldn't have happened anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you do have to be secretive. And like, so, so many of my fans are like, you're, you're keeping secrets from us again. And I was like, it's <laughs> not my fault. I can't. But yeah, don't worry. Really <laughs> um, but yeah, we are hoping to do a little bit of recording and hopefully have something um, coming up in the next few months. Um, so there are lots of things. It's so annoying when people say there's so much exciting stuff happening, but it's, it's a good feeling, you know, to be able to say, actually, please stay with us, stay excited because we have got things coming. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's always, you've got to match what you've done and then you've got to keep going up from there. So it's about, you know, achieving that and, um, keeping everyone happy and enjoying what you're doing and putting out into the world. Mm. Yeah. And it's, it's, it is about trying to keep that excitement going as well, because I, do, I don't think people realize that my friend I was talking to her the other day. Um, and I was talking to her about just how long things take. So my prayer to a snowflake album took two years 
the Get Ready and Release. Inspire was, I think, a year and six months. Um, it's not just a case of recording something in a couple of minutes and banging it out. Like, it's just not, <laughs> that's not how it works. Um, and so, like, you can get excited about an idea, but you've got so many things that you've got to implement in the time frame that you've got. Um, it takes months, if not years, to get yeah. something out, even if it's just a single. Like, it, it just takes so much time because there are things behind the scenes that take a lot of time. Like, for example, um, if you're using a distributor like CD Baby, you need to get it on there at least four weeks before the release date so that it can be submitted for Spotify playlisting. And that's a whole yeah. month gone already. Yep. So, Man. <laughs> just got, oh, there are so many things that you have to do, like with the licensing as well, making sure you've got the licensing and you've registered it for all the royalties and, and all that kind of thing. That stuff takes time. Um, I think the best example I've got of that, um, just to explain the point a bit more, is um, for my Preto Snowflake album, my winter album, I used Ryuchi Sakamoto's Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, in order to create the song Preto Snowflake. So it was an instrumental track that we wrote lyrics over. We had to wait over a year to get permission to use that track, to use Ryuchi Sakamoto's track for that song. And I had to delay the whole album because we were so waiting for permission. While you were waiting, did you know you were waiting for an answer or were you just like, did you know that there was an answer coming or were you just waiting, waiting, waiting to see if they replied? Um, I knew they were going to reply right. because we, we knew exactly who the publisher was and my publisher was able to reach out to them and my publisher is brilliant. I love him. Um, Stan, Stan and Julian at Wardlaw Music, they are amazing. Um, so... I knew that we would get an answer. I just knew that it was a long process. Right. Um, wow. So it Crazy. took a really, really long time. <gasps> well, well done for persevering. Because Thank you. It's easy to give up as well. It's so much easier to give up and be like, oh, um, something else or, you know, mm. but when you persevere and you achieve what you wanted to, it feels so good. It does. It does. Especially like when it does take such a long time, you finally manage to get it out there. Um, it does feel really good. good. It must have been so good. So, I mean, yeah, it was nice, but yeah, it took ages and delayed the whole of the album. But to be fair, I think I should have known that it would have taken longer. I wasn't quite expecting it to take over a year, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad he said yes, though, because that's one of my favourite songs on the album. Um, because of his music, you know, he's just so talented. I love him. Um, but yeah, his music is incredible. So I was so happy to be able to include it. I just, yeah, yeah, you don't know until you start doing these things yourself, how long things are going to take. Exactly. And I mean, even editing a video for my Patreon, my mum was sat next to me the other day. She's like, what are you doing? Where are you? What do you, how do you know what you're doing? Where are you clicking? Yeah. <laughs> and it's got all of these different things going on, all the different video tracks and then syncing it up and then editing it, chopping it, you know, all these different things. Yeah, it, I actually love that's kind of my favorite bit when you've got your video, you've got your track, and then putting the final product together. I love that bit because you know you've you've done it. Yeah. Um, but again, as you said, it doesn't quite take a year and a half, <laughs> but it still it still takes time. Yeah, it takes a really long time. Um, so for some of these podcasts that I've done before if the technology hasn't been our friend that day and there's been major delays and stuff, I've then had to go through and edit the podcast and, um, and then putting it up and doing all the metadata stuff and making sure that it's got the right tags on YouTube and adding the end screens and adding the cards in the middle and doing the promotion, all that kind of thing. Like it takes the, it takes a good five, six hours yeah. to do podcast. Um, and that's just the way it is. I mean, thankfully, I like it. <laughs> and I like being able to talk to people like you. Um, That's the thing. We've got, to enjoy, we've got to enjoy what we're doing. And as long as we're enjoying it, we're fine, I think, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice when you can enjoy the process. It's just making sure you know that it is going to take a while. And, and it's keeping that enthusiasm going as the project yeah. goes on when it is taking you like a year and a half to <laughs> do something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's just because that's the thing you've got to do and that's how long it takes. It's just one of those things. Um, but I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to streamline that side of my business because um, with lockdown and everything and not being able to get together and do live concerts 
physically and everything, it would be great to be able to release more stuff. Um, and with my YouTube channel now, I've got a 20 point system that I implement every time I upload a new video. Um, and so I'm thinking that if I could get a system like that in place for releasing singles or mm -hmm. something like that, instead of going, right, what's the next thing and having it all in yeah. my head, because I think as creatives, we're very good at holding all the stuff in our heads. Um, actually having it on paper and working it out systematically, I think would be mm -hmm. quite a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Well, <laughs> yeah, good plan. <laughs> Talk about goals. Yeah, but your, yeah. your goals, I mean, they're so much more interesting than a systematic plan of how to release music. <laughs> <laughs> Because so with your like learning all the instruments in a week, I'm guessing you have had a look at some of them before. If your husband's a trumpeter, have you had a go on a trumpet before? Um, mm, not no, so well, I've blown through it and um, <laughs> not really. I mean, when it's lying around, I'll play it, but I can't do anything. I just, I mean, I know how to buzz like the, I'm going to do it wrong now, but... You know, blowing, I don't know. Well, you can always get him to play it and then mime that it was you. <laughs> I could, I so could. I won't. <laughs> I'm sorry, that wasn't actually me. Um, I've oh no, do you know, with that would be a really funny idea. Sorry, <laughs> just to um, have, do all of it me and then have a really cool solo, but then like pan onto James playing the trumpet. <laughs> That bit wasn't me. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. That would be so funny. Oh my gosh. But yeah, um, the other thing I was going to say as well is that I guess nobody knew that you were recording under your bed because then when you record a video, you have to mime to what you recorded in order to record a video. That's just how it's done. But then it looks so beautiful and people are going, oh, she's got a lovely place to record, but it's actually been with towels and a duvet under your bed. Exactly, yeah. So before I, I created my recording den, um, I was doing more poppy stuff so my voice wasn't cutting through the walls. So I could kind of sing down and it would still sound all right on the, on the tracks. And then, you know, I wanted to do more classical things and I revealed the secret to my patrons. I thought, you know, this is so ridiculous and we're on, you know, you're joining me on my journey and I want you to know what's happening and you know they'll find it funny and and silly as well um so so i did tell them but like for my friends who didn't know they said oh it's such a nice place you know is that you know in your house i was like oh yeah just move move the piano around blah 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 um but it it isn't all sung there or none of it's sung there and they're like what <laughs> Yeah, that's the other fun thing about these podcasts is that you're able to find these things out that you wouldn't know normally. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Well, it's, it's great that you share it with your patrons, though. I think it's really nice when you're able to share things like that with people who really want to support you on your journey. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, they get to know all the behind the scenes stuff that people don't normally get to find out. Yeah, and that's kind of the point of it. I want them to get to know me and my personality and I want to get to know them. And I think through sharing things like this, you know, they'll then share a story and, you know, they might message me or they might comment underneath. And from that, that also sparks new ideas of what can be made in the future just because of the interaction that we have together. And I love sharing the behind the scenes things. And I know that I like to see that for people that... I enjoy listening to and that I look up to. Uh, yeah. It's nice to have insight into their life as well. I think. Absolutely. Well, on that lovely positive note, what I think I'm going to do is make sure I include a link to your Patreon in the description. Um, and I'm going to ask people now, because this is what I'm going to be doing, to go and check out your Patreon. I want to go and have a look. And um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't wait to see these challenges that you get to. <laughs> be amazing. I know. So thank you so much for choosing to come and spend your time with us and for sharing your stories. It's just been so lovely to talk to you and get to know you. And um, yes, I'll include all those links below. And so Amazing. Out. Thank, thank you so much for having me. And it's been so lovely chatting to you. And I can't wait to talk again and also meet in real life. Yes, I'm looking forward to it already. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I'll speak to you again soon. All right. Bye.